Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Alex Bermudez Washed Thermal Shock Processed Columbia from Rush Rush Coffee Roasters. And there's the box right there. And Rush Rush, based out of Antwerp, Belgium. And this is their first ever appearance on this channel. As they're a coffee roaster, I had zero familiarity with going into this review. I have heard a fair bit about the Alex Bermudez coffees, as some people have labeled them a cheaper and better alternative to the Letty Bermudez. And given that the Letty Bermudez is one of my favorite coffees that we've ever reviewed on this channel, I definitely wanted to try this one for myself and see how they do compare. So I'm definitely looking forward to discussing this one as this right here is day 40. And recipe we went with for this coffee was our standard recipe, a 16 to one water to coffee ratio, brewed at 96 degrees Celsius, about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind. Roast profile for this coffee, so they do offer a filter option. And as I always say, it's a little bit more tricky to tell when it comes to these heavier processed coffees. But this one right here, you can tell was fairly light by most standards and metrics. I, again, wouldn't necessarily say that it's the lightest coffee. It does seem to share some characteristics with some other Belgian coffee roasters we've reviewed, including Mach most specifically. About on par with that, if maybe a little lighter, but not quite as light as something like the Biggie Chemist. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 20, first impression, and the cup had the classic Letty Bermudez-like aroma to the brew, but the cup itself was a little bit more tame, relatively speaking, as it radiated a lot of the peachy aspects to the cup, but not in as defined of a profile as the Letty Bermudez. Now, I'm going to be referencing that coffee a lot throughout this video, and once again, for anybody that's never tried Letty Bermudez, Letty Bermudez has this very defined peach gummy-like aspect that's so much so to a point that it feels at times like it could be an artificial coffee like it doesn't actually taste like coffee because of just how well articulated and defined that peach gummy aspect is to the cup so with that this one had a very vibrant and radiant peach aspect but it wasn't quite as defined in that kind of peach gummy sense in addition to that, there was a slight bit of this complimentary citric brightness, so it did leave a positive first impression. I did have a little bit of hesitancy that we might get a fair bit of fermentiness, but from this first impression, not quite what we received. So we continue on to day 22, ran it through the Chemex, and it was a little bit more in terms of that fermenty direction that I was expecting with some additional red fruit aspects complementing the vibrant peachiness. And that seems to be the case a lot of the time with the Chemex is that it can kind of accentuate a lot of those more fermenty heavy aspects of the cup. So I already knew from this point that it probably wasn't going to be the ideal brew method for this coffee. With that, it remained a pretty heavy cup with a long lasting finish and definitely nowhere near as good as that first impression. Day 24. Ran it through the April Brewer and it was actually the best it's been to this point by distance as it was offering the most clarity it had with less of the fermentiness in the cup. There was a slight bit more brightness and even some florality to complement what was a pretty vibrant peach forward cup yet again. So definitely saw improvements there on that day 24 mark. Day 27, up the temperatures, a bit more fine of a grind, really wanted to push this one, and it was actually a little bit better than I might have expected, as the peachiness was present yet again, not quite as heavy fermenty as it had been with the Chemex, and it was almost reminiscent of a less clean and defined Letty Bermudez with plenty of that peach candy forward aspect to it, in a little bit more of a hard candy sense and a slightly fermented sense, as opposed to, once again, that kind of artificial peach gummy experience you do have with Letty Bermudez. But even then, I could kind of see it as Letty Light in one sense, with some additional factors that weren't maybe necessarily to my preference. Day 29, same adjustments to the Chemex, and unsurprisingly, it's the most fermenty it had been up to that point. And I said that earlier, that I was really concerned that the Chemex would accentuate a lot of those characteristics, and that definitely happened. And I knew from this point, I was just going to continue experimenting with the V60 exclusively, if not, maybe trying one more brew with the April Dripper. As, uh, once again, it's uh, kind of accentuated a lot more of the bright and fermenty aspects to the cup, significantly less defined as well, so I was losing out on a lot of the clarity and uh, definition of the coffee. Day 33. 
back through the V60 with higher temperatures, a more fine grind, and I was beginning to think that maybe the alternative to this coffee is to kind of go back to the original recipe as it kind of continues to remain just a little bit more, I don't know how to say this, fermenty in the peachy sense. So this time it wasn't quite as vibrant or clear. I think that the coffee was maybe going backwards. It was becoming a little bit more heavy and with the adjustments I had made on the earlier days, it was just yielding more positive results because the coffee hadn't necessarily reached its full vibrancy or potential yet. But here on this day 33 mark, it had, it was quite fermenty, even with the adjustments that we had made that yielded some positive results earlier. So for that reason, on day 35, went back to our standard recipe and the coffee was the best it had been to this point as a lot of the fermenty aspects felt toned down yet again. So in that same sense, this coffee did feel ever so slightly finicky as I was having some inconsistent results with this one. Highly candied peach and reminiscent once again of the Lady Bermudas with a fermenty aspect. And that's kind of the best way I can describe this coffee at times is that it is maybe Lady Bermudas with a fermenty aspect to it. Brighten candied florality, brightness and candied florality as well. The best it's been up to this point, but once again, it's not necessarily quite as clean or as well defined as the Letty Bermudas. Day 37 attempted one more try with the April Brewer and it was a fair bit fermenty this time again. So it continues to offer a lot more of the heavier aspects to the cup with the peachy and floral aspects also being present, but maybe not quite as clear because it had been slightly marred by those more heavier um, components to the coffee. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. All right, and we have three level fives. So let's go through those real quick and we'll start with the finish level five, yes. And I don't think that will come as a surprise. These three uh, level fives, I believe were also similar with the Lady Bermudas, but uh, finish level five. Of course, it's going to be a level five. This one has that very long lasting uh, peachy finish to the coffee. In addition to that, it can be a little bit overbearing in that sense as well, given that it's not quite as well defined. I think we'll discuss that a little later in this tasting wheel, but yes, very long lasting, heavy finish to the cup with a slight bit of fermentiness to it. Sweetness, level five. Yes, it's a very sweet cup of coffee. I think that was always expected. Uh, Letty Bermudez, Alex Bermudez, these kind of thermal shock processed coffees, they tend to come out very sweet in general. So the sweetness reaching that level five mark. Yes, it's not necessarily the good level five because you have to take this tasting wheel all together to kind of really f see how you feel about the coffee. So that level five, not necessarily ideal for me in this coffee. Stone fruit level five, yes. For as much as I love stone fruit and unsurprisingly, it's going to be my favorite part of this coffee. The stone fruit maybe not necessarily being as clean or specific of a stone fruit aspect to it. I think the best way I could describe it is a generic peach candy that's present within this one as opposed to, in the case of Lady Bermuda's, that peach gummy-like attribute or in the case of a lot of washed Ethiopian coffees like a fresh peach, but this one right here just a little bit more of this slightly uh, generic peach candy component to it. And then we have a bunch of level fours. We'll start with the acidity level four. Yes, it's a pretty bright coffee. That's something I've been mentioning periodically throughout. Even with this one being pretty, well, heavy in one or two directions, you were still able to notice a fair bit of the brightness to this one. So that's why it's interesting that that did reach that level four mark. Caramel, level four. Yes, and that typically does indicate the candied aspects of a coffee. And this one right here, as mentioned, it had a very strong candied aspect to it, which if the clarity was maybe a little bit more defined, then I could have enjoyed that a little bit more, but uh, is that right there? Not necessarily my favorite level four for that, but once again, that's a little bit more in line with the candied aspect as opposed to maybe just an actual caramel. And then we have a bunch of level threes, so we'll start with the florality at level three. Yes, I think that that might have been higher in coffees that had a little less of a strong uh, one note aspect to them. So if maybe the stone fruit hadn't been as dominant in this cup as it had, then the florality might have reached a level four. As these coffees do tend to have a little bit of a floral aspect to them as well. This one right here, noticeable enough to the point where it uh, charted at that level three mark, but once again, seemed to be dominated a little bit more by the stone fruit. Berry fruit, level three. Yes, that's something I'd mentioned pretty early on in this one as it had that fermenty kind of red fruit aspect to it. A lot of people describe it as light cheese. Some people describe it as maybe like a heavier strawberry, but it was present in those earlier days. And when I was making this tasting wheel, I was able to get a slight bit of that yet again. Citrus fruit, level three. I've also mentioned that at times you can feel this slight citric brightness that's also present within this coffee. And that's something that I have experienced from some of Diego Bermuda's other coffees as well. 
Um, but this one right here, it's not a Diego Bermuda's coffee. Just wanted to put that in there. But what I'm kind of insinuating is with these Colombian coffees, you can see those attributes as well in these coffees. And then the body level three, yes, not surprising in any sense about that. It's a little bit more medium bodied in theory. Maybe you would expect that to possibly be a little higher given the processing method, given the origin, given the brew method, but level three seems perfect for it. And uh, what we've all been waiting for, the cleanliness level three. On paper, I feel like that's actually going to be pretty good to look at, but here's the thing about this coffee. It is quite fermenty and it's so much so to the point that it's at that lower side of the level three and maybe possibly the higher side of the level two. And there's one big reason why I put it at level three as opposed to level two. You can really taste the peach in this one. It's very like pronounced, it's very strong. And even with the very strong heaviness, that fermenty aspect that's within this coffee, it justifies that level three just because of how much you can taste the candied peach within this one. So. Maybe if that note hadn't been as strong as it was, I would have pushed this down to a level two, but I think it deserves that level three just because of how strong that one aspect is within this coffee. But the fermentiness is keeping it from being any higher than that. Once again, a little generous to put it there at that level three, but yes, that's kind of the most important thing within this tasting wheel because if it reached that level four, then we have a very special coffee because we have a lot more definition to it. We have a lot more clarity, but the fermentiness for me is what held this one back a little bit. So this tasting wheel, I feel like it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I can see how people could look at this coffee and say that it is a cheaper alternative to Lady Bermudez because uh, given that this one right here, I wanna say that it's the Castillo variety. Uh, yes, it's the Castillo variety, which is what Diego Bermudez uses for the Diego Bermudez coffee. And that one's nowhere as near as clean as the Letty and Lena Bermudez, with which both use the Gesha variety. So that's why it's not surprising that this one wasn't quite as clean. And it very much felt like Letty Light as it did have that very strong peach aspect to it. But given that it had a fermentiness to contrast that real, really strong peach notes, then it wasn't quite as good as the Letty Bermudez. But once again, they share a lot of characteristics, just maybe not the same level of clarity. And I see that's why people might say that this is a, a good alternative, like a cheaper alternative. But for me, I think that that's what really kind of sets these two coffees apart is I'm looking for that clarity. That clarity is extremely important to me. So while on paper, it might seem like it's not a big deal. We're kind of uh, finicking, but we're kind of going between one level on a tasting wheel. It, just kind of does make a world of difference for me. So this one wasn't necessarily my favorite. I don't think that it is anywhere near Lady Bermuda's and my own personal preference, but I can see why people might enjoy this one a little bit more. This one, I guess it does offer a little bit more. People do like that fermenty aspect. They do like the heaviness and they do like that it gives this coffee a little bit more depth to it because Lady Bermuda's at times can skew very strong in one direction while this one might offer just a slight bit more than that coffee does, but it's not the type of thing that I'm looking for within this sort of coffee type of person I would suggest this coffee to, that kind of puts two and two together. So if you have liked the vibrancy and wild peach aspect of the Lady Bermudez, but you're also looking for maybe some more of the heavier processed aspects of these coffees, and this is a really nice marriage of those two things because it does offer both of those things in significant enough abundance that it may give Lady Bermudez a little bit more complexity, a little bit more depth, and it's not necessarily skewing as strong in one specific direction, but rather offering a couple of more things that Lady Bermudez doesn't quite offer but the reason I enjoyed Letty Bermudez was because it did skew in that one direction in a very clean and defined profile. Kind of the best way I can leave this review. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Alex Bermudez Washed Thermal Shock Processed Columbia from Rush Rush Coffee Roasters. Thank you for watching.